All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Lazy Fire. We're still playing Tomb Raider. If you recall, the last time we played, we had gone through a firefight over in this area here. Uh, this is the campfire I saved at. And we're actually going to go into one of my favorite areas in the game, as I've mentioned before. If you look at the shanty town, and I, am, I do apologize if anyone wants me to keep going quickly, uh, but you look at the town, it's got a little bit of the Japanese architecture in it, and then it's got this ramshackle look to it. And it just looks really nice uh, compared to a lot of the other areas in the game where they're all, uh, well, that sort of thing up there. You know, our ultimate goal is over there. Uh, and, you know, we're going to get up there and we're going to go back into the series of temples and caves and stuff that we've been going through. Uh, but this is just a unique little area in the game. I really like it for that. I like the the uh, kind of thrown together appearance of it. You have to remember these are the first these uh, guys we're fighting are the first survivors on this island in decades. And look, Boris. Uh, he survived. Oh well. I can always use food. Yeah. Uh, let's go grab that and we'll start off on this again. I can't help it. Uh, there was actually a cutaway in another video where I killed a boar, and I didn't keep it, unfortunately. Hey, look, a book. Okay, actually, that was a relic. Uh, books and relics sometimes look the same to me. And, yeah. Hello. Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the boar to do that. Oh, and while we're here, might as well burn an effigy. Huh. Yep, that is the challenge for this area, is to take these things down. Uh, when I first found out about that, I was kind of confused, because if you look carefully, there's a lot of stuff burnable in this area. Uh, but not only that, those are kind of hard to find sometimes. If you're like me and you're just looking for the uh, the white coloration, like there and up ahead, then those are going to be uh, pretty common. Oh, look at that bird texture. That guy is flying weird. Oh. And I, you don't really notice this until you mess up like I do there, uh, but the arrows do fall eventually. They don't travel on a straight path forever, which it's a very easy mistake to make to think that they do that. Uh, this area is kind of nice. It gives you a few different options to move forward. Right now, we're just going to keep going this way. Uh, pick up some ammo where we can. It's always a good idea to take all the ammo you can get, uh, especially in this coming area. Let's swing over here real quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of messing around partially here. Uh, I like to take this path on the far right. It's a nice little area, a little off the beaten path. And there's salvage, which I almost forgot about. I do really want to keep the salvage collecting to a minimum for the LP, but unfortunately it's sort of a necessity if I want to be able to afford uh, better and better upgrades going forward. Yeah, hold on. Alright, so you can see there's 15 storage caches in this area. We will probably not be getting them all this video. I've actually attempted that in the past. It's not fun. This is uh, more of an exploration heavy area right now. Not so much a combat area. Actually, you'll recognize this area. It was right here. Just picking up everything I can right now. And let me show you this. You've probably seen a couple salvage crates that have been all over the place before, and uh, now we actually have a chance to hit the stuff in the air. Took damage there for falling down, uh, and hitting fire, and I just got a shotgun part upgrade. Now the shotgun, when it's upgraded, becomes a pretty mean machine, and I mean, right now, it's pretty damaging up close, so you're not in a bad spot, but it really becomes great when you start getting upgrades for it. Let's open that up. And you can see the range on it isn't bad either. And Laura was looking over here at these shotgun t uh, cartridges. Pick those up too. Got a we got a fight. 
Yeah, I can do that. You, you can hit those guys from behind. Uh, cover. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't like that none. Uh, let's switch to the rifle for now. I mean, they're using them. I feel like I've been using the bow far too much in this LP thus far. Uh, so I am going to try to change that up. Ooh, okay. Now, usually, I think I got the right upgrade for this. Nope. Alright, let's go finish them off then. I keep thinking I picked up the correct upgrade to dodge and kill people. Uh, I guess I have not. Oh, that's a shotgun. Or no, maybe not. I don't know what happened there. Shoulder switch, suddenly. You can see, we're not too far from where I just was, so I don't know where these guys were hiding out while I was up there. And I don't... Hmm, I thought that was a thing I could shoot or something. I've never really seen that before. And, of course, right there. You'll notice me switching to the uh, pistol quite a bit by mistake when I mean to go for the shotgun. Uh, that's because I'm very used to having the shotgun be down on the D-pad. I have no idea why. I think it's... Uh, I think it's probably to do with Gears of War, actually. And the whole reason for coming over here. Okay, found another thing. Oh, hey, look. I just like these little, uh, these little paintings all over the place, too. Alright, with most of this area now explored... Oh, yes, by the way, barbed wire means you can't jump up there. With most of the area kind of explored, I'm going to make a serious effort to get us moving again. After a couple minutes of uh, delay while I went to go pick up everything in the world. Now, a nice little thing ju that you saw there is that Laura will pick up two things at once if they're close by. Oh, doesn't this look like a fight? <laughs> Alright. Uh, so we're going to get up here real quick. I'm waiting for this to trigger. I was hoping to be able to stay back a little bit before it started. Alright. Fine. Fine. I'll go take this fight to everybody. As you can see, there's a ton of explosive barrels. Oh, here we are. Move in! Move in! Ah! Yep. That's what that fight was. I completely forgot that one. I'm doing good. Good shot. Alright, these guys are giving me trouble here. Let's just set that guy on fire. Ah, finally. Yes, if you hit B at the right time, you get a quick time event where you can either end up killing the guy outright or you can stab him in the knee with the arrow. I messed up the timing there, and uh, the timing is actually kind of difficult. <laughs> Not gonna lie, to uh, to hit the, to kill the guy outright. It, it was rare for me to do that when I was playing uh, the first time through. Holy crap! Let's just blow him up. Get this out of the way. Now you can see the uh, the fire arrows tend to knock people back more than they tend to straight up kill them. Oh shit! Alright, this guy's doing okay for himself. He's absorbed about 18 shotgun shells. Alright. As you can see, my rifle's upgraded to an AK-47, uh, oddly enough. And these guys have also upgraded their weaponry. Uh, you'll notice that they're using uh, full-out assault rifles now. And Survival Instinct wants us to see something. Yeah. Easy enough. Yes, bright white cloths can be burned. It's also reminding us that we can switch our ammos. That's nice. So we will actually be switching to our fire arrows again, and we're going to get right through this area. Simple enough, right? I keep thinking that's a, a box I can use. Let's get going here. 
we're actually coming up on another fire, but I'm going to skip through that, or well, save at it, and switch some things up, and then we're going to continue on. So, while we're here, this is not a, uh, this is not a fast travel one, so we just have the option to level ourselves up a little bit. Shotgun's close to leveling up. I'm going to hold off on doing anything with that right now. And honestly, I don't really want any of these items. Uh, I know that sounds kind of weird, but the full choke and the barrel shroud are actually kind of nice shotgun things. Uh, only one of them is viable. And you know what? I'm going to break my own rule and go ahead and get the barrel shroud. When you upgrade your shotgun and other weapons, they actually get a little bit stronger and a lot better. Uh, just right off the bat from those upgrades you pick up. What's going on? Okay, uh, it looks like they found the old man, if you recall the last episode. Oh, time to go in some dirty water. Laura, oh, Laura's favorite. And real quick... Damn it. There's actually a, uh, a journal up this way. Let's go grab that. Yeah, I know. I'll get moving in a second. It's just when I know where these things are, it's a lot easier for me to just grab them now than come back. Okay, uh, you'll see that at the end of the video, of course, but that does explain how this place got built. And, while we're here, let's just grab an effigy, huh? Now, there's one thing I haven't done with these rope arrows that I mentioned in the thread when someone asked about them. But yes, you can pull people around using them. Which I thought is a really cool little thing. I completely forgot to do it uh, up to this point, and I didn't even do it in my first let's uh, playthrough. And I just like the, uh, the color of the water here, colored by the oil and everything that's uh, seeping in. This is basically all the sewage, as far as I can tell, from this uh, this location where all these guys are living. Uh, it's Grim. Oh my God, Grim! Let's go see Grim. Let's go. All right, let's take some guys off the ladder first. Can I have? Oh, sorry. Okay. What? You go, company. Not a chance, you bastard. Grab the alarm! Let's go! Someone light her up! There it goes! Okay. Uh, Laura actually has a line in this area, which I was surprised she didn't say yet. Um, but yes. There's a guy on an alarm up here, and we're introduced to a new weapon the uh, Solari are going to be using, which is dynamite. And there's a new guy uh, carrying it, too. Uh, you just saw me kill one there. When you see these guys explode, uh, it means that I've killed one. Okay. Alright, they're gonna be fast roping in. Let's just pull that up. Take care of that guy. Okay. Bam. This is going to be that arrow to the knee... Well, yeah, 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 whatever, fuck it. Uh, that's going to be a very important skill for, like, the rest of the game, basically. And I would, uh... I would suggest being smarter than me and knowing which one that is when you go to pick it up. Because it is immediately useful. Especially with how many melee guys some of these sections will throw at you. And while it's not a melee-heavy game per se, it still has its moments like this. Now, the, uh... The downside to that is, uh, of course, that if you do not hit, uh, if you have an enemy with armor on and you just attack him with that melee, you'll have to do it several times to break the armor and then kill the guy. <sighs> Man, and this is just a long section. Maybe it's because I'm using arrows, I don't know. I'm trying to hit that, trying to hit that sweet spot that'll get me the insta-kill. Uh, of course, there's no real penalty for messing up that move. Oh, hey, Grim. You're alive! Just barely. Where are the others? Still locked up inside, but I know where they are. Get up here, and we'll get them out together. I can't climb up there from here. Ah, damn it. Well, they got some kind of setup for hauling cargo. 
Maybe you can use it to come around the other side. All right. I'm on my way. Cool, so we found Grimm again. He's, uh, obviously, if you remember the last episode, on the run from a man called the Somalian, who seems to run this village for Matthias. Or maybe he's just taken the place of that Russian guy who we killed earlier on. Who knows? Uh, but, yeah, Grimm's, uh, we gotta get to him. He's gonna lead us to everybody else, and we'll all be happy. It's just gonna take a few minutes. There's a little bit of backtracking. And we got a new rifle part. That's all good news, really. And, uh, yeah. Just gonna loot all the corpses I can. No real harm in that, you know? Let's get up here. And get going. Yes, this, uh, cargo hauling system is actually pretty complex. And it's a bit of a trek to get to it. If you go the right way. It's difficult to kind of mess up in this area. And we're not going that way, apparently. I just like to show that off. Uh, the, the scale in this game sometimes is really impressive. Just, you know, the distance. Actually, you can look at that and see it's a painting uh, or some graphics superimposed. But the scale is uh, kind of impressive sometimes. Oh, and if G over there, we're going to worry about that later. The outsider is here! Warn the others! Now, you can see that there's a couple of these old World War II era alarms around. You saw them use one in that last section, actually. And, uh... If I start pulling it, there actually will be more alarms, so I'm not going to touch those. Or actually, can I even use them? Yeah, I think I can. This is not an ideal scenario that this guy's trying to get me to slide into here. But we're going to do it. We're going to do it with a shotgun. No way out of here! Just here! We got her! Get over here! Bam. You can see that guy just survived the shotgun blast pretty Whoa, fuck. Alright. Then we got a guy up here. And I swear I was getting shot from the behind there. It's really difficult to kind of use the uh, bow to snipe some of these guys. It's not as accurate as you'd think of. We're going to move forward, and we're going to do it with the, uh, the rifle here. Jeez. This game really could use a little bit of uh, maybe a more accurate weapon. The bow is not perfect on that front, uh, but it's pretty close. But... Oh, boy. <laughs> you can get knocked over by that thing if you're dumb. I kind of pushed it to the last second. Ugh. Go away. Yeah, and the problem with the shotgun right now is... Oh, hey. Yeah, you can do that. Uh-oh. I fucked up. Well, uh, honestly, I have to be down here eventually anyways. But uh, I've never had that knock me off like that. Hi. Uh, well, that was an interesting moment. And if you look at the bottom right there, we found a dude. Now you can see why that one guy, he's uh, got armor flying off of him. This guy right here. Uh, they're starting to introduce armored people to the game. And uh, they'll be around for a lot of it. Especially uh, some of the more drawn out fight sequences. But right now, we have come out on top, despite the weirdness I went through there. And we're actually not going to go on our little cart ride quite yet. We've got some things to do and things to see. I'm not going to actually show off getting every single one of the uh, crates out of here. Because if you want to look at it, uh, things big. Oh, shoot. There we go. Open this up and then explore the area, and that will be it for the episode. The next episode will actually be in a temple or a tomb. But you can see there's a bunch of different holes. In this, if the camera wants to agree with me, there's a bunch of different holes in here. You just fire your arrows in, like so, and you'll eventually clear out all the salvage. Uh, 
can't complain too much about free money. Um, you can't go underneath and just do it. You have to be on level with this stuff. Because you can see it just drops out when it's done. So, I believe there's actually a weapon part in there is the big thing I want. And if you want to take a look, you're wondering where they're getting some of this metal from. Uh, it's those big kilns over there. Let me just jump across. You can see right here. They've got like a feed system that goes right into these things, and they got fires underneath, as you saw a second ago. And they're just melting down metal, and I guess casting it uh, or something. I there's nothing for them to pour that into. Uh, but it's nice that the game recognized the fact that this is a kind of weird thing that these guys would just have, you know, have all this metal stuff prepared and ready to go. So they decided to edit this stuff in or put this in uh, to at least show it off of where it all came from. But you can see more waterfalls, all this other good stuff, and a tomb, which is where we're going now. So, I will see everybody next time. In Edo, Japan, traditional men's garments had no pockets. Inro were miniature containers used to hold personal effects, like an ancient form of wallet. are usually lacquered wood, but this one's made of brass. Probably dates from the 19th century. The inside of this inro smells like tobacco. Perhaps this was used as an ancient cigarette case. My patience has been rewarded. At long last, I have my lieutenants, my enforcers of the way. The storms brought me exactly the men I need to begin building the Solari Brotherhood. Strong of body, weak of will. They were broken in the storms, weakened and vulnerable. And I raised them up again. Now they serve me. And through me, her. The Sun Queen. She is showing me the way. She has always shown me the way. I cannot deny what I have seen, and soon, neither will they. She is everywhere on this island. But the Solari Brotherhood must grow. We will recruit as many as we can. I will draft laws, create a code for them to live by, and they will build for the Sun Queen, while I search for the key.